Good afternoon. So right about now you're watching a pre-recorded uh, version of the Lunch and Learn that we're doing live on Facebook right now. So I urge you to type in the number two so that we just see the people that are watching in post-production. Today we're going to be talking about, um, you know, how excuses actually just sound best to the person that's actually saying them. And I see um, Julianne has just tuned in. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for your time right about now. I'm not sure who else is on there. Liz Bokani, how are you? Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Um, yeah, I had I had one of those weekends where I got to sit down in my office and I questioned a lot of things. So I'm going to be talking about all the things that I think some of us have to absolutely go through to get that transformation so that you can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So for those people that are probably going to be watching this video for the first time, I really want you to know that I believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and you have to absolutely enjoy, um, you know, uh, working in it. And also I believe that if you also have an online business you have to be able to create for and also relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of so every single day at 2 p.m aest without fail unless something is going on i do sit around here and then we talk about you know four stages of how you can actually build a business that's profitable and enjoyable and i've got the liberty of doing this because i lead a team um you know at live long digital where we actually help small businesses like you to grow essentially through digital marketing strategies i see mark murray how are you doing my man um yeah, I think today's uh, topic is going to be one of those that I think every entrepreneur needs to sit back and actually think and question themselves and ask, where am I, where are we, and what exactly is happening within their businesses? Because, you know, if you haven't got systems and if you haven't got procedures to actually follow through on all your goals and all your affirmations, all that we're doing would totally amount to nothing. I see Liz Bogani. So you say go go. I'm hoping you had a fantastic um, weekend. I got inspired um, by the stuff that I did over the weekend, and I actually really want to inspire you to do things that inspire you. Now, Julie says on your cutting out real. You're cutting out real bad. I may have to catch up later. Well, absolutely. Don't you don't have to worry about watching this videos live because um, you could always watch the replay and you could always watch, um, you know, um, when I put it up on YouTube. And if you're watching this show on YouTube right now, please, um, you know, leave us a comment so that we understand and know who exactly um, is tuned in. All right. So, I mean, without further ado, those that are watching now, I would like to respect your time and thank you. For your attention but there's one thing that I, I wrote yesterday if you're following my Facebook post as well and um, I really want to reiterate this as it was so profound um, and it has it's probably gonna change the way I actually operate and do business um, you know with my clients as well because yesterday what I noticed um, Mark says big things are about to go down, man. Absolutely, man. And I think today's show is going to help you um, execute on that. Because what I noticed is I've got goals that span from yearly goals. I mean, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, five-year goals, 10-year goals, and eventually, you know, legacy goals, you know. And I think every one of us has, um, you know, those kind of goals set up. And um, every morning when I wake up, I've got these affirmations that I reach out, I mean, that I read out every single day. And um, yeah, it's just to strengthen myself so that I'm focused on, you know, me actually succeeding and going through to my goals. But then I sat down on my computer, you know, yesterday and I just really was thinking, trying to figure out where is the business right now? Who actually, um, you know, um, you, you know, who do I actually want to serve and how am I actually going to reach out to them? All right. So not that I'm complaining or anything right now, we're sitting on 14 clients for the whole, um, you know, agency. Um, just need to acknowledge Scott Woodrow and Charlie O'Shea 
coming in. Great stuff. Thank you so much, homies, for tuning in. And I'm hoping you had a fantastic weekend. So right now we're sitting on 14 clients across, you know, the agency, whether it's, um, you know, their SEO, their AdWords, you know, their Facebook work that is being done, which is what the agency actually looks at. And 14 for an independent agency like mine is, 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 a, is a considerate, you know, is a considerable number, you know, considering, you know, half of those people are paying maybe plus or minus a grand five, a grand and a half to 2000, depending on what package it is consistently every single month, you know, but half of these clients are people that I have to chase around some of them for payment. Half of them, I have to chase around to get referrals from them. Half of them, you know, they, they are good clients to hang around with. Um, I am providing a good service, which I think I am, but, um, some of the times you, you, you don't get fulfilled as a, as, a, as, a, as a business person because you want to work with people that actually value your work, not people that are just there and treating your services like a commodity, you know what I mean? So some of the goals that I had for 2018 was to create the online prosperity blueprint, um, not the blueprint, um, the, the, the Australian... Jeez, the Australian Online uh, Business uh, Directory, where I'm going to be, you know, helping smaller businesses to actually grow. And then eventually from there, we might be able to work together. All right. So, you know, th that happened, you know, um, um, yeah, that happened, um, you know, really quick. And now we're all established and, you know, I'm left with the whole year to not really do anything. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, what, what am I going to do? Do I have to reshape my goals? Do I have to re, um, you know, do my, my, my strategy, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Mark says no one should be chasing up payment. Well, but then the people, <laughs> some of the clients we tend up, we end up having, man, you got to chase up payments in order for them to pay on time. It is lack of integrity on their part, but obviously we do make sure, um, we're putting out, um, goals out there. And then I realize, you know what, you might, um, yeah, you might be having all these financial goals. You might be having all these affirmations and stuff like that, but I haven't actually changed my behavior as a person. You know what I mean? Because maybe I'm attracting those kind of clients and, and, and now I'm maybe, um, evolving as a person and I'm now realizing that this is not the kind of person that I want to have, um, you know, in, 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 as, as, a, as a client, you know? So I, I know, I noticed that and I'm like, how am I going to make it easier for me, easier for the clients and easier for, for everybody around me? Because if I'm frustrated, you know what, what happens? I transfer, not that I want to, but we transfer that, 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 um, um, you know, that frustration to the family, you transfer that frustration, you know, maybe to my daughter and without realizing it just comes out and I know I needed to change that behavior. First of all, I'm working far too much, you know, trying to serve people that don't, you know, cross, uh, I'm, I'm trying to cross oceans for people that don't cross paddles for me, you know, so it, it was a reawakening weekend, um, you know, uh, to say the least. I see Greg has just tuned in and Glenn, thank you so much, uh, my man, for tuning in. I'm hoping you had a fantastic weekend. I just saw a couple of photos of you and you were not doing so well. Um, hopefully you're taking good care of yourself. All right. So, you know, you, you might have financial goals, you might have business goals, client goals, um, you might have goals pertaining to um, how you reach out to those people, how many of those clients and prospects you reach out to, et cetera, et cetera. And I realized that I have a list of people that I should be talking to, the type of clients that I'm supposed to be reaching out to, but I haven't been doing that. I haven't been reaching out to the right kind of client. I've just been waiting around, um, you know, for the low hanging fruit. And that is now costing my health, my mental psyche and everything else that comes along with it. G'day, look, Moroni. Oh, you're watching the Super Bowl. Has it started? <laughs> Should be checking it out soon. So, yeah, so I noticed that half of these things are, you know, a product of my own um, doing because I haven't been putting in the work to actually sit and attract the right kind of client. All I've just been doing is setting goals and, and talking about my affirmations and not actually going in to look for the right kind of client that I really, really want. And the biggest frustration now is there was a big disconnect um, in as much as um, I'm, I'm talking about doing 
helping other people do stuff, but I myself am not actually putting in, you know, the, the, the work. I'm not actually putting in the actions required for me to be doing and have a business that's profit, that's profitable and enjoyable, you know? And obviously for me to, I thought I was doing it well by reading all the books, by following all the gurus. I thought I was doing it, um, you know, by maybe showing up every single day, but I was not actually reaching out to the clients and actually speaking to the right kind of people that I wanted to speak to. And that just dawned on me, you know, on, on, on Sunday that I wasn't doing enough. And it's just started looking back now and thinking, how many other things have I been skimping on just because I was thinking everything was fine and did not want to go out of my comfort zone? You know, uh, Charlie says, I've never... I'll never lend money to friends anymore because of lack of integrity. Um, something always comes up when it comes to paying back. Absolutely. Well, you know, when people owe you money, it's, it's exactly something like that, man. Yeah. You know, it, it, we might go out of our way to, um, we might go out of our way to be really, really nice people, but other people, they just don't have it within them. So that's the reason why I really want to be this remarkable and different person. And I'm really sorry for those that are watching today that this show basically is really all about me because <laughs> most of the time I talk about, um, you know, I talk about how you can do it, but I'm just you know, reflecting back on maybe you can pick up a nugget or two on how you two can actually start putting in the work when it comes to your business. It's no longer about knowing, um, you know, what you need to do. It's no longer about thinking about what you need to do. It's actually really actually doing the work, calling those people, asking for referrals, all of those things. I don't think any of us are doing enough you know, to constitute us having businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. I mean, in the last two years, in the last four years, there's been a big shift where online, there's a lot of gurus, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are teaching people or teaching other prospects how to, 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 to have a business um, that's, that's actually good. But if you really look at their finances, they're probably not doing as well. If you really look at how they are doing, you know, they, they just probably copied that system from yet another guru. And it's just a spiral of, um, you know, copycats that are, you know, masquerading as people that actually know what's going on on the market. So I've always had a phobia against that. And I always put myself in check. And when I notice that I haven't been doing enough work, I haven't been doing, you know, enough. I, yeah, I call myself out and I'll be like, Hey, Prosper, what have you done? Cause the one thing that made me realize that is the whole of January, I didn't even get any new clients at all, you know? And, um, with a business like mine, it's continuously having clients coming in because some people are just maybe, um, you know, on a, on, a, on a contract basis or some people just have a promotion maybe for Christmas and just have a promotion for a certain period when their business is supposed to be functional. So if I don't continuously lead generate, if I don't continuously invite people in to understand what it is that we do, then that means the continuation of the business might suffer, you know? And Esther, how's it going? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day there. <clears throat> so, yeah, it is. It is something that I feel like um, I haven't been doing enough of searching the right kind of cl client and have just been waiting for people to come through. And um, yeah, not really um, opening myself up to new and um, exciting ventures out there, just sticking to what I know. So I'm, I'm thinking there's quite a lot of people that are not venturing outside their own comfort zones too, huh? You know, and Scott says, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> That's easier said than done if you really, really look at it. Because if you, if you also check it out, you know, some people have always wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know what I mean? And then finally they have this grand business idea um, and they actually know that their idea can, you know, solve a huge problem in a very elegant way and the idea can actually scale um, and, and, and it can go, and can go global, you know, but then this, this, uh, no one is actually competing, you know, within that space to, in order to make it happen. And, um, you know, if, even if there's competition within that space, the competition is weak and half of the time you, you notice to yourself that you might have this idea thinking about it day and night, but not taking action is not going to take you anywhere. 
You might be dreaming about putting something out there. You might be dreaming about your ideal client. You might be dreaming about your ideal business, your ideal lifestyle. But if you're just going to affirm about it, if you're just going to write goals about it and have a vision board and not pick up the phone and call the the, the, the customer and not pick up the, the call the phone to, to, to get referrals um, you know, from your existing customers just because it seems risky or it seems daunting or hard. I don't know. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound familiar to anyone else? You know, because some people simply talk themselves out of starting anything, you know, either it's starting a business or, um, or starting a, 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 an additional part of your business or even picking up the phone to contact um, your already existing customers or to seek out for new business or start a, a Facebook campaign or an AdWords campaign or whatever you do to generate for new leads. Because I remember before I started this this business, you know what I mean? I had a million thoughts about things that I wanted to do, you know? And, you know, this just sort of came out, you know? This just happened to to, 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 to take shape, the whole digital marketing business. In, re in retrospect, you know, I see that I actually have legitimate fears about growing. This is what I've noticed. In, in this year, I have legitimate fears about actually growing this business because this whole month I've created yet another platform that could blow, but I haven't done anything in order to expand it in as much as giving it as much potential as it possibly can. You know, I don't know if you're watching this show and if it's making sense and, and maybe I'm just putting out excuses there, but I just thought I'd, I'd come around and say, you know what? I really want to make this an accountability post to actually start really putting in the action there to actually grow this business and, and, and reach out as, 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 as much capacity, you know, as it possibly can. You know, because I've got everything in place, you know, the right mindset, I've got the right team behind, I've got the right mechanism of how a business should be built, but I've just not been growing it. And and I think it's probably just... <laughs> Scott says it's fear, false evidence appearing real. I don't know. It's It's probably something legitimate and I'm actually being very vulnerable right now and say, you know what? I, I probably I probably need to really really do something and and be consistent in in the growth of of this business because one of the reasons that I've always been coming up with is it's not the right time for this you know and um you know I also know that you know people who become entrepreneurs you know maybe they're they're teenagers or they're just starting out and others will start their first business when they're a little bit older you know um here's a secret that a lot of people that have probably started a business might actually know there is never a right time, you know, and I hope I'm listening to this myself as well, because I've always been waiting for that opportunity time, that right moment. And, and I, and I just noticed that it doesn't exist. So it is an excuse that I need to get out of. And I think somebody else who's watching might have the same excuse as well. Now, Kristen says I'm guilty of that too. And Kristen also says making a lot of action, but not actually doing stuff. Yes, you are so right. <laughs> uh, there never is a right time, you know, and, and, and you can always convince yourself that maybe you need more money, you need more experience, you need more connections, you need more time, you need more confidence, you need more skill, you need more business acumen. And I'm looking at myself, I've got all of those things. Like nothing is lacking. Why wouldn't, why am I not like, why am I still in this office? Why haven't I started subletting somewhere else and actually hiring out? You know, it's, and the list goes on. And I, I think it's a legitimate fear that I really need to see what's going on right here. And Tough says, I know you know now is the only time there is. Well, how are you doing, my man? I, I'm hoping I realize that, you know? And, and, and I'm trying to take my advice as I'm speaking this as well, that I need to have faith that this is actually the perfect time to expand. You know, in a year or two... Um, it might not it might not be important anymore to have a digital agency you know in a year or two these things might just be done by an app in a year or two 
I don't know, Facebook might not be existing. I don't know, you know what I mean? What, what am I waiting for? So you might be asking yourself as well, within your business, what is it that you must be doing that is, and you're not taking action on, and you're waiting for the right time, you know? And I'll tell you something, a year or two after you've started, or a year or two after you, 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 you continue with this, you'll see that there absolutely has never um, been a, 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 a perfect time. And Kristen says, you look successful to me. <laughs> Well, absolutely. Every level has its own devil. I I should be bigger than this right now. And I know it and I can feel it in my bones. But I haven't been taking the necessary action in order to hire the right team to actually expand and probably prospect and make sure that we're actually growing a um you know a business that in the direction of which I I, I really want to go. So absolutely thank you for acknowledging that. Now Charlie says every time we wanted to start a business, the banks our account, our parents, our friends, and losers have told us we couldn't. Now we're about to start three and four and the first one in Bali in July. Well, absolutely. And congratulations. You do you do the coin laundry stuff, right? You, can you type in there, Charlie, if that's what you do? Because those those businesses are needed. And once you have one, it, it, it generates another one. It generates another one. And um, I think it's a low cost, low overheads. Once you just pay the rent and then you've got the machinery in, all you got to do is make sure that the stuff is working. And what would stop you from having location five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? What would stop you? You know, and I'm just questioning myself while also talking around here and just really trying to figure out how else can I expand? How else can I do this in order, um, you know, to, to, to make this happen? You know, and, and I've also had this legitimate, um, you know, uh, fear that what if all else fails? I've had this legitimate fear ever since. What if it fails? What if what if it doesn't work? You know, and um, and I realize that entrepreneurs tend to be people that are filled with so much confidence, um, you know, that they don't focus on any chance of something going bad, you know, and. I don't know. I've just been thinking to myself, I've got a daughter now. I've got my wife. I've got to make sure everything is solid. I've got the foundation all going on, you know. But there's always that tough fact that businesses fail within the first 18 months. I'm way past the 18 months. I'm way past the two-year mark. What is stopping me from actually expanding, you know? And that's the legitimate fail that I've had. So you might be having that one too. And uh, Scott says, uh, communication is the key to personal and business relationships. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, if you can communicate either by email or actually express what it is that you do to your prospects so they understand what it is that you actually do, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you know, it helps people understand and help you out. Now, Charlie says, um, early next year, you're going to be doing saunas. That's pretty cool. Um, Esther says, the fear makes me overthink things. I think, I think we, we, we're sitting on the same fears right there. And, um, yeah, I just really wanted to come across today and, and, and see how everybody else is doing. Charlie says, uh, and starting our coffee club in Bali next year. Whoa, whoa, this man is on fire and I love it. I love seeing people doing stuff like that. And it's, it's really impressive to see people actually gunning for their goals and actually going for what they deserve. Good on you, Charlie, my man. Good on you, my man. Uh, Kristen says, you know the Marianne uh, Williamson poem. Um, it says, our fear of success limits us. Who are, who are we? Oh, yes. Our deepest fears, what does it say? Our deepest, um, our deepest fears, uh, what stops us? Uh, my acting small is not going to be shining a light on other people. I know, I know that uh, poem right there, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I was still talking about, you know, the fears of probably what if everything fails. And I think um, a lot of people understand that if they don't put in the work, um, it's not going to work, but they're not going to do it because then it takes them away from their comfort zone, you know, and I feel like my recommendation to this is just embrace the possibility of failure, you know what I mean? Just accept it as it comes and accept the lessons that come out of it because, because if you fail, you know what I mean? You learn something tremendously valuable about yourself 
the person you're becoming, you learn something about your business and something about your life that wouldn't have been brought out had that lesson not, um, you know, come through. Now, Charlie says, once you lose your fear of debt, nothing else should scare you. Whoa. <laughs> That's a that's a really brave one, my man. Um, have you have you lost the fear of death yourself? You know, have you lost the fear of death? Let me know that uh, fear is fake. You lose it and then get back into building. Absolutely, absolutely. And Tando, great stuff. Um, Christian says, "Oh, Charlie, we had the discussion uh, last week at." Nat Denman's speak for profit. Okay, so so you guys are saying death is the ultimate fear that people should actually be afraid of, because if you ask me, people are actually better off dying, or people are actually better off being the person that says the the who is in the coffin than the person who actually says the eulogy. You know, I, I, I heard that somewhere that people are even afraid of public speaking. They'd rather die. So are you sure that death is the biggest fear right there? <laughs> Great stuff. So, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you might be starting this business or you might be two years in, three years in. I just really wanted to come around and be a little bit vulnerable and also get ideas as to how do you guys go past that when you really want to expand, but you've got all these limiting beliefs and fears or all these things happening, um, you know, behind the scenes that no matter how hard we try and, you know, say all the affirmations, you know, put out all the goals. If you're not putting in the work, it shows that you've got those limiting beliefs behind you and you may start you know, another business or you may realize that entrepreneurship is not for, for you just because of those fears and they can actually um, cripple you from expanding. But if you don't try, you know what I mean? You simply would never know. And I know that for sure, you know, and, 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 and then there's that fear of failure should really never stop you from doing anything. And, um, and Kristen says, I came here to get answers from you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but funny that this was something that I pondered this week. No, it's absolutely good. I'm I'm really um, appreciative of you guys, you know, tuning into this show today. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's something that has been on my mind for quite a while. Why I haven't been expanding, why I haven't been actually taking the leap and getting out of my comfort zone and actually really doing, um, you know, <laughs> what I'm actually capable of. And, um, and I just remember that, you know, People who are on their deathbed usually regret the things they did not do and not the things that they did. So I, I just wanted to come here and actually have, um, a, you know, a live affirmation and a live confirmation that I'm actually going to start putting in the work, um, you know, that is actually needed. Because I've got really pretty much everything else that everyone would say is an excuse um, you know, for, for expanding or doing better or going into partnerships with other agencies, all of those things, I've got the capability and the capacity behind the scenes, but I've just never seen to lift a finger and wanting to do that. So, you know, I just <laughs> thought I'd let you guys know where it's all at. And, um, you know, in, in, in as much as um, I had those fears, I also had a lot of limiting beliefs. So if you had those um, you know, and sometimes I would think to myself that it just all seems too hard. Does everybody ever think like that, that you can see what you're supposed to do, you know exactly what it is, and it's just too difficult to do, you know? And, you know, because then I'm thinking, oh, I've got 14 clients now, then I'm going to have to deal with 20 others. Nah, let me just forget it, you know? And, um, yeah, and that's one of the things that has just been stopping me from expanding, it all just seems to be hard the bigger I'll get. And I really want to confront that fear. I really want to confront all of those, you know, that baggage and all those negative, um, you know, connotations. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, if, if I'm not going to do it, nobody's going to come and knock on my house's door and say, hey, listen, brother, you're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be growing. Um, and, you know, just sp playing small is not helping anybody. Playing small is not you know, moving the needle for either me or or my family or whoever is got the hopes on me. You know what I mean? And um, 
Yeah, and if if you really look at it, it's all all that's left now is is work, and and I haven't been doing that, and so I really. Thank you guys for indulging me today as I really wanted to make it solid, make it real, make it sink that I really got to start doing the work. And I understand starting a business is very hard. It's not easy because if it was, everybody else would be doing it. And it might be the hardest thing anybody can do in their life. Obviously, I've lost sleep. I've, I've had fights with my wife. You know, I'm now slowly having less time with my little girl. And potentially at some point I've lost quite a lot of money you know and it's scary it's not easy you know and that's why we then once we get that medium position we just want to stay in there and, and, and be comfortable and i really want to nudge myself out of it and and get out of the rat race of entrepreneurship of just being regular and just doing enough to get by you know what i mean i i really need to be soaring and, and i want 2018 to be that year that i'm doing that you know because there's no getting around to this one. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I don't want to be a dinosaur in this in this exciting business, in this holy, um, easy to do stuff that's difficult. And, and it comes with meeting awesome people like you guys. You know what I mean? So I really just thought I'd put out a really clean, vulnerable post and also make this an accountability post for me. Um, you know, so that I can actually work my tail off and get my hands dirty, you know, take off these cufflinks and actually roll my sleeves and start putting in the work to grow this baby here. Um, I really thank you so much, everyone, for indulging on this show today. And um, my advice to myself is now to be honest to myself. And I hope you're going to be honest to yourself as well, knowing what exactly you want putting affirmations out there to go ahead with it and actually putting in the work. Do you know what I mean? Because I know deep down, you know, if I start working, all these things would, would just blow out. And I know it. I've got everything in place, all the systems in place, but I haven't just been working. So you're going to be expecting to see a wholly new person. No more, um, you know, being a freeloader, doing the same things and hoping things would change. I'm actually going to start putting in the work. I want to see if you're going to be with me. Um, you're going to be with me on this journey. And if you're going to be doing the same for your business as well, or if not, just come in for the ride and watch what is about to happen. Um, because I feel like, yeah, excuses sound best to the person that's telling them. Now, one last thing, uh, Charlie says, brother, you, you have what it takes. You need a great coach. And I know the guy, ah, uh, I'm, yeah, coaches, I need to see their bank balance first. I'm tired of going around with people that are also just trying to, you know, get around with, um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to have to see their bank balance. I'm going to have to see their business ethic. I'm going to have to see what they've created. If they're not anywhere near where I want to be, it, it will be a waste of both our time. But thank you so much for that, um, you know, uh, indication. And I hope that's not my limiting belief that is denying that I will keep reading and actually putting in the work. I, I know far more of what I should do, but I haven't been doing it. So maybe this time I don't need um, influences. I actually need to roll my sleeves and put in the work. So I hope that's the same with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, let's catch up tomorrow when it's all um, to do with reports as to how it's actually going. And um, yeah, and how you two are building your business so that it's profitable and enjoyable. If you enjoyed this show today, let's continue the conversation in the, in the comments. Um, if not, that's also good. But I really thought I'd pull it out there so that you guys actually understand what else I'm going through. And um, if it resonates, then we can work together. If not, then it still works out. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.